Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. I wanted to give a quick follow up to the video I put out yesterday where I was talking about different realistic price targets for Bitcoin. And in that video, I focused a lot on different technical indicators like moving averages and the volume profile, as well as some on chain indicators like the distribution of realized price, long term holder price, things like that. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to check it out. But one of the things I mentioned in that video was that if we see a full on you know, 2008 style crash in the stock market, you know, look out below, you know, Bitcoin would tank really far. And I didn't go into looking at specific price targets for that. But then I thought, you know, why didn't I, why don't I do that? You know, why don't I do a quick follow up video where I talk about some price targets we might expect if the stock market were to correct different levels. And basically we can just do that by some simple modeling to then project different price levels for Bitcoin given different scenarios for the stock market. So I'm showing you here the Bitcoin weekly chart here and the um, stock market index that I'm going to be using for the modeling is the NASDAQ. And the reason for this is that a lot of people say that, you know, Bitcoin is most tightly correlated to the NASDAQ. You know, the NASDAQ is a very tech heavy index and just generally Bitcoin and NASDAQ tend to move together more than Bitcoin would necessarily move with something like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones. It will move with those two, but it's most connected or most correlated with the NASDAQ, so that's what we're going to focus on. And really what I want to do is kind of lay out some different possible scenarios and then ultimately talk about, you know, if we were to see 2008 again. So I'm going to use that as kind of our potential worst case scenario. You know, if, if we were to decline a total of 54% from the highs, what would that do to Bitcoin price? So I'm choosing to use that as the comparison instead of the dot-com bubble burst, just because I think that this is a little bit less realistic now for the NASDAQ because, you know, back when the dot-com bubble burst, a lot of these companies that were in the NASDAQ had no earnings. They were just kind of vaporware, nothing really uh, going on there. Whereas nowadays, you know, tech companies generate tons of revenue. They're very legitimate companies, very well established. So I'm going to use 2008 as kind of our extreme bearish shit scenario, but obviously, you know, one couldn't make a different assumption. Some might argue that we could see another dot-com bubble you know, fair enough. I'm just not going to make that assumption here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is switch over to some charts that I generated. So I'm just showing you here the Bitcoin chart over the last um, two years. And I'm choosing to isolate the analysis um, or to fit uh, a regression model to the last two years because, you know, the, the beta, the relation between the NASDAQ and um, Bitcoin can change over time. And so I think it's more useful to just look at kind of recent history, how Bitcoin and NASDAQ have been moving together and then use that to project into the future because, you know, how they were moving together back in 2000, you know, 2009, 2010 doesn't really mean all that much. So what I did very simply was just created a logarithmic regression model just predicting the Bitcoin price from the NASDAQ level. And what we can see is that the, the fit of the model is not bad, right? You know, R squared of 0.68, you're not familiar with this metric. It basically just tells you what proportion of the variance in this case in the Bitcoin price is being explained by the NASDAQ um, level. And so 0.68, not, not spectacular, but not too bad. I think it gives us a reasonable kind of um, uh, ballpark estimates. So I'm not gonna take these estimates super literally or super seriously, but at least giving us kind of general ideas of different levels that we might expect, I think it's useful for that. So really what I wanted to do then is show, okay, so if we have this model, where we can use to kind of get estimates of Bitcoin's price based on different NASDAQ levels, then let's do some hypotheses. Let's change, you know, let's assume different things happen to the NASDAQ level and then see how that affects the Bitcoin estimated price. So the current estimate for Bitcoin's price based on this model of the NASDAQ being at, you know, currently at 11.5K is that Bitcoin's price would be at 17.6K. Now that's a little bit below what we're currently trading, but not too bad, right? It's in the, it's in the general ballpark. So it's, you know, reasonable. And again, that's why I'm saying not to take, I'm not going to take this too literally, just give us some kind of ballpark estimates. Let's imagine then a kind of bearish scenario. Let's say that the NASDAQ were to decrease by 20%. So this is not the full on 2008 style um, uh, estimate here. This is kind of a more intermediate bearish scenario. Let's say we see a 20% decline from current levels. Well, that would actually relate to a Bitcoin price of 7.3K. So that would be pretty disastrous in and of itself, right? This isn't, this isn't even as bad as the 2008 crash was, we'd already be estimating a Bitcoin price of 7.3K. 
Now, again, this is all ballpark. Wouldn't mean that Bitcoin would have to fall that low, or this model could be completely wrong. You know, it could this relation between NASDAQ and Bitcoin could break, wouldn't have to go that low. But if current relations held, we'd expect Bitcoin's price to fall pretty precipitously. That's the main point of this exercise. But also, you know, let's just throw in a bearish scenario here quickly before we look at the kind of max bearish scenario. So if we saw a 20% uh, rally in the NASDAQ from current levels, that would actually predict a Bitcoin price of around 36K. So that'd be pretty nice, right? That'd be over a 50% rally for Bitcoin from current levels. I think a lot of people would be happy about that. You know, these correlations go both ways. So if we see a rally in the NASDAQ, it should be good for the Bitcoin price. But now let's look at kind of that max bear scenario, that 2008 style crash. And so that would be the NASDAQ falling all the way back down to around 7,700, um, that kind of general area. And what that would actually predict for the Bitcoin price then, as you can see, would be pretty rough. It would be 3.5K Bitcoin. So that's talking about going all the way back to kind of the March 2020 lows, you know, that crash lows not good you know that would not be a happy scenario but that's what this model would expect should the nasdaq fall basically have a, a repeat of the um the 2008 crash and so that's kind of what i was talking about yesterday is that you know if the stock market totally tanks if it totally crashes look out below things could get really bad and worse than uh, i think a lot of people think is possible you know, the move down to, you know, 20 and, you know, the local bottom at around 17.6K or somewhere in that ballpark, that felt rough enough. That felt like full-on capitulation for a lot of people. And it might have been, you know, that could end up being the bottom. We really don't know. But, you know, if equities get absolutely hammered and if we have a full-on crash, you know, if we get a recession, that's a really bad recession that's not at all priced into the stock market yet, and we do have another 2008-style crash, then you could be seeing Bitcoin falling precipitously from current levels. And so I'm not saying this is especially likely, and I'm not even saying that these, this model would hold in that way. And so, you know, don't take these numbers as gospel or as being, you know, that we would definitely follow these exact levels, you know, if the NASDAQ fell these different percentages. But it, I think it does just do a good job of illustrating how bad things could get if the stock market has a massive crash. So just flipping back over to um, the price chart here really quickly, you know, if we saw this happen in for the NASDAQ, you know, we've already fallen pretty far, right? We've already fallen, um, you know, around 30%. But if we then go the ultimately go down to, you know, around 7,700, you know, more or less kind of going back down to the March 2020 um, capitulation lows from current levels, that's really where you know, a 2008 style crash would bring us down to if we go down, you know, around 54%. So again, at around 7,700 on the NASDAQ, that would be brutal. And that would, you know, that would predict basically a Bitcoin capitulation or Bitcoin crash all the way back down, you know, down to, um, let's see, 3,500 uh, per Bitcoin. So basically going down to, uh, below actually the March 2020 um, levels. So it'd be quite, quite nasty. We an 81% drawdown from current levels. So again, not saying that's especially likely, not saying we'd even have to capitulate that far should that happen. You know, the, the, the model is not, you know, as I said, it's not gospel. It's not a crystal ball. It doesn't know that would absolutely happen, but that's just what it would, it would predict happening right now. And so I think we should just all keep this in mind that, you know, I think, the fate of Bitcoin is going to be tied to to the stock market and other risk assets, whether whether or not we like it or not. You know, it's it's just the way it is right now. People are treating it as a high risk asset. It's going to trade like a high risk asset. It's going to be correlated. And so, if we saw that kind of blood in the water in the stock market, we would see blood in the water for Bitcoin. Now, I do also want to mention that if that were to happen, the way that you can flip, excuse me, flip the framing in a more positive way is think of the opportunity that could potentially offer for Bitcoin if we went down there, right? You know, assuming that Bitcoin will trend up with time, right? You know, obviously you could make an argument that if we go all the way back down to 3,500, more or less kind of the um, 2018 lows, if we go all the way back down there, some might argue that that just kind of invalidates Bitcoin as an asset class and that's just kind of over from there. I don't know if I'd make that argument, but you know, one could certainly, you you'd probably see a lot of people making that argument at that point. And you know who knows what could happen but you know if you do assume that bitcoin is going to go trend up with time 
just think of getting another opportunity to buy in at these levels, right? You know, basically a second chance to buy in at the, the bear market of 2018. And especially if Bitcoin ends up doing something like this again, you know, has another, you know, big explosive move to the upside, it ends up being kind of ultimately a, a over 2000% move back to the upside. I think anyone would be happy for that. And so that's really kind of the way you have to think about these things sometimes is that it's, it's a lot of pain when it's happening, but if you have capital to deploy, it can be a massive opportunity. So not saying anything that's anything like that's going to happen. We really don't know, but just some things to keep in mind. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. Put a lot of updates, better indicators, and more over there.